Hello there, I'm Orbator, your Welsh engineer, and welcome to this SLS to Duner and back. Yes, I decided to do an Apollo mission style mission to Duner, lander, uh, command pods, etc, etc. And I'm going to show you the entire build, just in case you want to follow it along, and especially if you're on the console. So, yeah, I've speed, speeded the video up, if I can see it, get that out correctly, so that you guys can follow along or whatever don't forget in YouTube you can slow down the video so do that if you want to follow along and turn off the sound because my voice going very slowly might be a pain in the ass to listen to however if you're one of the ones who just want to watch the entire mission without seeing the build then go and skip to time code 1 minute and 25 seconds into the video as you can see from the build, it is very easy to build lander and transfer stage. And you could start build them off with the docking ports pointed at each other. That will make things a lot easier. Don't forget to make your main capsule the first part you start with, the one pointing forward. Otherwise, your rocket will be pointing backwards when you're launching it. And doing the SLS, that's quite easy, actually. Just some large tanks, some large engines, and some solid rocket boosters on the side, which is roughly what the SLS is. Now for the launch. On the way to another planet, with three epic Kerbals in the cockpit. In fact, one of them is none other than Jebediah. However, the other two are two Kerbals, which have asked me to do a mission to Duner in one way or another. I think one of them must be to do a base on Juno using the SLS, which is why I got this idea of using the Space Launch System, which is what SLS stands for, and send this on the way to Duner as a sort of like the prelude to a base on Duner. However, don't forget, we are going to be doing the dual missions. Okay, this is getting into orbit, and as you probably saw, which I should have talked about, was the boosters. I didn't put any separatrons on them. Now if you put them low enough and you put the separator, the decoupler, high enough on the rocket, on the booster rocket, then that, the top end of this should be pushed away. As long as the bottom end doesn't hit the bottom rocket and destroy that, then you're fine. As you saw with the aerodynamics, when you push them away, the aerodynamics push the rockets sideways, pushing them away. So anyway, what is the story behind this mission, other than two people asked me to go to Duner? The story is that this is the mission, the first mission to Duner, by the Kerbals, using the space launch system, which they copied from someone's computer, which said NASA on it. And it was before the era that we sent Kerbals to the dual system on the landing expeditions. Oh yes, and by the way, all the Kerbals were in the lander. I had to transfer one Kerbal across, otherwise you'd be trans- you'd be- having the Kerbal crawl up the center of the rocket nozzle and through some liquid hydrogen, liquid fuel tanks, liquid oxygen. I don't think that's healthy for any Kerbal. I'll be putting this craft up for download, hopefully it isn't, I don't think it's a mod, I use totally stock parts and not even from the DLC, so anybody, even the people on consoles can do this mission. Now with the craft in Apollo style configuration, we can plot our course towards Duner. And yeah, apparently I needed to do a course correction on the way. And also I put the course correction clip before I'd done the boost towards Duner, which is a bit odd. I think I was thinking that I could do that and show you that you do a mid-course correction as well as the boost. And then I can show you this epic part where we sort of like separate the rocket, turn the rocket around and then use the transfer stage to get us all the way to Duner. Leaving Kerbin behind, these epic explorers will be the first to set foot, or perhaps set crash, on the new world. I think the first time that we do this, we send people to Mars, this will be the huge, the biggest expedition that humans would achieve. Uh, that's if we do it, it's still a bit complicated and dangerous, it's possible. I think the problems are not what we know, but what we don't know, like radiation, how will that affect our Kerbals? No, our Kerbals are humans, that we send in our humans. And how would, you know, what are the things that we don't know about, like micrometeorites, we've sent probes and everything, but they're all small craft, it's not one huge craft. 
And right now our Kerbals are set to land. We can see the heat haze from the dust storms which are been raging on Mars. They also rage on here on Dunar at the same time. But our epic explorers do not worry about the dust storms because they have, um, uh, I don't know, dust protection, spacesuits. That's another thing. The dust on Mars is super fine. It's all like, like cigarette ash. And that's why it's so problematic on, on Mars. And that's why there's huge dust storms because it's not like big sandstorms that we have here on Earth, but it's really, really fine dust. Probably fine enough that, you know, it's probably destroying the rovers as they're going along. Right, as you're coming into Dunar, enter the atmosphere, you go going to hit the atmosphere, it's not going to slow you down enough, you're going to use, have to use your rocket engine to slow down enough until the parachute's at the safe state that you can deploy him and they'll bring you down safely. Now this is different. On Mars, the atmosphere is so thin, we deploy the parachute first, get rid of the parachute and then use engines to land. At least that's what we did with the latest rover and we lowered it down the cable, but that was because it had wheels and putting rocket engines on the rover itself would mean that the rover itself would have to be a bit smaller. So that's why it was lowered down via crane style. And hopefully we'll do it again in, what is it, 2025? I can't remember, but I can't wait until they send the next uh, rover over to Mars. Anyway, Einstein Kerman was the first Kerbal on the surface. Next we have Siren 001. And finally, Jebediah who likes not to land on plants but to crash. And since he wasn't able to crash the lander, he crashed himself. Good one Jeb. Right, now straight to science. Okay, you guys follow? <laughs> I love the way they walk using the follow me mod. Or it's only half as funny as Jebediah zipping across the surface using hyperwarp. Uh, still, that was quite slow, so we used the jetpack instead. And here is the crater. Oh, all you have to do is take some samples, but hey, what's that over there? Must be some of that unobtainium, which is from the film Avatar. Almost forgot the name of the film then. There should be a second film for that. I think they were planning two more films. I can't wait for that. And it looks like this rock is really floating. Jebra, take a sample. Yes, sir. Count, sir. It seems to be not your. Must be a glitch in the matrix. Now our Kerbals are back. They can set up their flag. All the science is done. And we're going to put an epic message on here, which is to Duner with SLS. Welsh engineering to Duner. Of course. <laughs> I couldn't think of what to put on the flag. I was trying to think what funny thing's gonna put on the flag, but sometimes the best things are to just keep it nominal. And these Kerbals are worrying that Jebediah are gonna leave them alone. Luckily, we calm them down and say, is not like that. He doesn't forget. He might crash you and kill you, but he will not forget you. Now we have to send the Kerbals back up to rendezvous with the transfer stage, which has got the uh, majority of the fuel for return. I was planning on launching this and rendezvousing straight away like here we are doing now. However, I thought it would take sort of like a couple of quick saves, you know, perhaps three attempts until I get the correct trajectory. However, I did it on first go. Awesome work! I think it has something to do with the fact that Duna has a thinner atmosphere, so it's a lot easier to plan your trajectories and you don't have to worry about drag, which is what causing me problems when I tried to do the similar thing on Kerbin. It does take me a couple of quick saves then. Right, let's get, I forgot his name, was it Ursaren? I can't remember his name. I don't know who we got here on EVA. As you can tell, this is post-commentary as because this is a reel from the past where, because this past mission and it was Siren 001, yes, that was second pilot. I think the other one is an engineer. We didn't bring a scientist on this mission. We brought two pilots and an engineer. So they know nothing about the science other than ro rocks float and do mysterious things like pass through the matter. However, these Kerbals are the best, they're the bravest, and they decided that they will not only just land on Dunar, they will not return until they've landed on Ike. So it's Ike we're going to. 
Yes, we seem to have enough Delta V. However, there's a bit more to this story than that. We'll get to that, however, when we get to our return state. First off, we've got the mission of landing on Ike. Those back at Kermin were, pray were pleading with them, please return, you may not have enough Delta V. What if you come into emergency and have to do emergency maneuvers? It's okay, we will land safely and we will return. We're Kerbals and we have Jabadar with us. And for some reason they sounded quite old over the transmission there. That would be quite interesting. If we send a mission to Mars, would we actually visit the moons? Now, the moons themselves are pro more like asteroids orbiting a planet, and they're small, they're pro less significant, I suppose, than landing on Mars. I don't think they would be part of the plan to land. However, we may do something like send some probes, because, because of the distance from Duna, I think a probe would be much more, I don't know, controllable, I'd say. Perhaps a little rover and then sort of like one of the scientists can operate it while the other ones go around collecting boring old rocks around Duna or Mars. I keep on saying mixing up Duna and Mars. I, I don't know if I said it correctly. I'm not going through the video and correcting myself. Uh, anyway, all Kerbals out. We'll leave the message up to one of the Kerbals and it is our sign. The message is, we like Ike. I think that will be remembered by all Kerbal kind. Now it's time to return. All the signs is done and they flush the toilet, leaving um, future samples for future Kerbals to find within the future of every future. And yes, I made a mistake. I launched this and I didn't realize that we were no longer in an equatorial orbit, which is a bit of a pain because once you orbit, once you get the planet or moon rotation, then rendezvous is a lot harder. So we have to do the best we can. Get in the same plane, try to get into a similar orbit or close enough that we can get a rend rend rendezvous, rendezvous in the future. And luckily, as you can see, we get a rendezvous within just one orbit. So we have to do one more entire orbit. Luckily, we still got plenty of time to return to Kerbin. In fact, I can't remember how long it took for our orbit before we could return to Kirby. But first off, we have to use what's called the Olberth effect. That means that you have to get closest to the largest gravitational pole, which is Duna. So that means we have to go back to Duna, not land, but get into a lower orbit. And only then can we return safely to Kirby. So transferring the Kerbals out on EVA. Again, because we've got no Kerbals to control it, I could have put a control probe on there. However, that does take extra weight. Transfer the fuel back to the transfer stage, transfer our Kerbals across, and dock, and then plow our return to Duna. Now, it's best to get the lowest possible orbit towards Duna. That way you can make better use of the old birth effect. However, because our limited fuel which I did not take into account that we we're going to land on Ike. That means that we have to be a bit more conservative. So we have to go into an elliptical orbit. All we want to do is make sure that we're not going to encounter Ike again and get thrown out of orbit of Duna or into a weird, strange orbit. I suppose where it could have done, which I've only thought of now, is to use the atmosphere Duna to slow ourselves down to get into a low orbit, then raise the orbit again slightly so that we're out of the atmosphere. That way we'd have been closer to Duna and may have had a better effect on the old birth effect. Okay, so this is the first simulation. I had a bit of a suspicion because the readings on the Delta V from the Kerbal Engineering Redux was not showing the correct amount of Delta V that we could actually change in our velocity. If you don't know what Delta V is, Delta V is just the potential speed that you can change in your craft. So if you have 100 meters per second, that's the speed that you change your rocket. However, engineering was predicting this wrong. Worked it out that we had about 450 meters per second, or 440. As you see, our burn that we need to return is 460. So I'm using the, the um, monopropellant as well as the rocket fuel to try and return us. Will this be enough? Will our Kerbals return safely? 
Those back on Kerbin, which is, I think, about four Kerbals, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's your four Kerbals. Were praying that, with the limited amount of Delta V, that they would return. And the trajectory that they chose seemed to get them close, but not to know it close enough. Now, with only a slither of fuel left, they had to plan their return route. They decided to use a supercomputer, which was called Bob, and a pen and pencil. And he tried every calculation possible until he was able to get an encounter with Kirby. But will this be enough? Will this return trajectory work? Do the Kerbals have enough fuel? These are questions that have to be answered. The boffins at Kerbal Space Center request that they reduce the throttle of the engines to the lowest possible to give the greatest of control. They take a number off the back of a notepad, which they have no idea where it came from, and tell them to aim their orbit, their return height, to 15 kilometers. Because their return trajectory was a little odd, they told them to stay at 15 kilometers. This would hopefully mean that they will not ricochet off the atmosphere and go back into interplanetary space, and that they will survive re-entry. But in any case, the Kerbals have returned. Whether they will return in one piece or in several billion pieces, known as dust, it doesn't matter. They have returned. And what epic missions it has been. Even I was wondering how I would return with so little Delta V, and I was surprised that it doesn't take that much Delta V actually to return from Kurt from Duna. But in hindsight, I would advise you, if you're gonna follow its mission, don't land on Ike. Keep as much Delta V as possible to return to Kerbin. Because these Kerbals appreciated that, would have more appreciated that more from me, I think, than the mission to Ike. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, like an engineer, and also subscribe and whatever else, leave a comment, it all helps. And also, if you are subscribed, hit that bell notification thingy, Majigi, on the side, because that means that you'll get notified at new videos, because that's what YouTube wants you to do these days. So we'll leave these Kerbals here, rocking in the ocean, as we pan away from them, from this historic event. And let me know what else we'll do. I'll go back to the dual mission thing, get that over with, and we'll see what else we can do. Trust me, I'm an engineer.